Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Pylon Cam. Today, as promised, we are going to go through the NFC Divisional Standing Projections for 2021. Uh, let's just get into it. We're going to start with the NFC North. Um, I think that this division is going to be very similar to how it unfolded last year, except I think the Vikings are going to be a lot better. Uh, the Vikings defense, uh, Mike Zimmer's on the record of saying that uh, that was the worst defense he's ever coached, and a lot of key players were missing. Daniil Hunter was out the whole entire season, and he's coming back. I think that the Vikings are the biggest competitors to dethrone the Green Bay Packers. I just have no faith in Kirk Cousins to win um, big games. I do have uh, – I've said it in the podcast if you're new to the channel. We do an NFL coverage podcast every Thursday and a fantasy podcast every Tuesday. Um, I just think that next year, if the Vikings can't make the playoffs or win in the wild card – they are going to move off of Kirk Cousins. I think that with how good their team is, they need someone who could win big games. Um, and Kirk Cousins, just he can't win on Monday nights. His record on Monday is abysmal. I think it's 0-9 or 0-11. Um, I know for certain he has no wins on Monday nights. And I, think, I don't think he has a single playoff win. Um, but Vikings are the most interesting team to watch in this division, I think, because they're the competitors to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams have dubbed this season the last dance, so I think they're going to give it everything they can to go out and win a Super Bowl this season. I have them coming in at 12-5. and five. I'm just a little bit skeptical of their defense because one of the biggest flaws the Packers had in uh, 2021, or 2020, excuse me, is that they couldn't stop a run. And then after... They played the Titans at home in a blizzard and shut down, quote, shut down Derrick Henry. I think it became, they kind of just brushed that issue under the rug of, oh, now the Packers can stop a run, the run game. And that just simply is not true. So this defense, this defensive front is still super suspect. Um, Aaron Rodgers does everything he can to make up for the defense. I think that you need to be able to stop the run so you can stop a team from managing the clock. So um, that's going to be a big issue for the Packers this season. I think, you know, with how talented Aaron Rodgers is, you don't have to go out and worry about that offense because he realistically has been playing with a one wide receiver for the past two or three years with Devontae Adams. So I think that the Packers are going to be fine. Chicago Bears are going to be fun. I don't think they're going to make any noise until next year when Justin Fields has a, a whole year under his belt and he's come into his own. Um, but I do think that Justin Fields is going to start way earlier rather than later. I think that the Bears are kind of honoring their promise and the whole stink they made about Andy Dalton starting or being QB1. Um, I think they're going to honor the promise of, Andy, you're going to start week one and we'll go from there. Matt Nagy traditionally is a very good September coach. All of the Andy Reid pedigree are good September coaches. So, And Andy Dalton's no slouch. I think that Chicago has just had bad quarterback play for so long. They're being a little bit impatient. So prediction for Justin Fields to start is going to be probably around week four or week five whenever October comes in and the team starts to deteriorate a little bit. Um, but I have them going 5-12. and 12. This is a team I'm really excited to watch in the future. I'm really excited for Allen Robinson because he's finally going to have that quarterback where he could break the 1,100 mark because he's really been carrying his own – career in Chicago by himself because he hasn't had any good uh, quarterback play. And the Lions, I have at 2-15. and 15. I'm excited for the Lions. I, I really hope that the Lions can start a rebuild that is successful being that um, they've been rebuilding for so long. I really think that Jared Goff kind of is going to be a very good, is probably one of the best bridge quarterbacks you could get in the NFL. Um and they have so much draft capital, and they have uh, a lot of promise with Penny Swell, even though he looked horrible in preseason. I think his biggest weakness, being that he's just such a mauler, he's just so physically big, their biggest weakness is going to be, um, or Penny's biggest weakness is going to be in the passing game, pass protection. And that will come with time. And in a year where you don't have your franchise guy in Jared Goff and you're just rebuilding, um, the asset to protect is DeAndre Swift and – um, and Ross St. Brown. That's really the two cornerstones they have on offense. So it'll be interesting to see what they do and how Penny develops. But I think the Lions are going to go 2-15 and 15 this season. I don't think anybody really has high expectations for them. But this is going to be a fun team to watch over the course of the next few seasons. The next division we're going to talk about is NFC East. 
A lot of you could be looking at this and being like, oh my God, you have the Giants winning the division. Yeah, like that's my prediction. That's my projection. Um, I could be wrong, but if I'm right, it looks better. If I'm wrong, then it's like, ah, you took a gamble. So I have the Giants. I think the Giants have the most upside of any team in this division. I will say Washington, without question, has the best overall roster. But the Giants are the most well-balanced team in that if Daniel Jones could take a step in the right direction, they will win this division. He doesn't have to take a massive leap like Josh Allen did. Because what people are kind of assuming is now all these year quarterbacks have to take a Josh Allen year three leap. But forgetting that Josh Allen took the biggest leap of any quarterback in NFL history in college. Like the biggest leap of any quarterback ever. Um, so Daniel Jones for the Giants needs to move in that direction. They have a great defense, and even though their offensive line looks horrible, they look horrible in the passing game. Saquon Barkley's back, and the New York Giants' offensive line is an average to above-average pass-blocking unit. So if they could pass-block for Saquon Barkley and then develop that one or two explosive play to Kenny Galladay when they're in the red zone, who is the best one of, in 2019 he was, the best red zone wide receiver in the entire NFL, there's a good chance this Giants team comes out and shocks everybody. You add players like Kadarius Toney, who's going to be able to separate on those stick concepts for Jason Garrett, and he's going to have the most separation, the biggest burst speed of any receiver on this offense. Um, That's going to be great for Jones. And then you have Sterling Shepard, who's operating solely from the slot now, and he reports are he loves it. He can lead the team in targets. And then you add Caden Smith, and, or not add Caden Smith, but you see the development of Caden Smith and you see the develop in the addition of Kyle Rudolph. The Giants' biggest weakness on offense was red zone efficiency, and they went out and got the best red zone receiver and the best um, red zone tight end, in the one of the best red zone tight ends in the NFL. I think the Giants are going to shock a lot of people. If Daniel Jones could take care of the football, they're going to shock a lot of people. Everybody is kind of forgetting that the Dallas Cowboys need to play defense. No matter how good their offense is, they still need to play defense. I would classify Dallas as the best shootout team in the entire NFL. Their defense could not stop the run last year. Antonio Gibson's two best games, and he's a breakout candidate for fantasy and for real life, came against the Dallas Cowboys. This Dallas team added Micah Parsons and a whole ton of rookies, but they didn't make any free agency acquisitions. So they're banking on their rookies being able to, on top of coaching, be able to carry this unit defensively and let the offense still score points. So people are also forgetting that under Dak Prescott in 2020, the team was 1-3 and and losing to the New York Giants. Um, And then the Eagles, I have no idea what to make of the Eagles. I think they're going to be a very scrappy team. I think they're going to steal a lot of division games. But outside of that, I'm not sure... Um, how much noise they're going to make. I'm not sure what they're going to look like. I think they're immersing full, fully in the rebuild. You see they added Gardner Minshew. They kept Joe Flacco, I think. It could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong, comment below. Um, but I think they're ready to move off of Jalen Hurts. They have rookie head coach and Nick Sirianni. Uh, their defense is still a mess. They're one of the most injury-prone teams in the NFL. The offensive line is good, but hurt all the time. They Their receiving core is... Looks better, but I still don't think it's there yet. They have a rookie number one in Devontae Smith. Quez Watkins looks like he's going to be a great slot receiver for Jalen Hurts. Um, And they have Jalen Rager, who now is going to be the two. And I think that with the Eagles, the biggest thing for them going into 2021 and beyond is how is Jalen Hurts going to pan out? Because they have the capital to move off of Jalen Hurts. They're going to have three first-round picks. They're going to have all of the resources necessary to go up and get a quarterback or to build around Jalen Hurts. But I think that Jeffrey Lurie is making it clear by signing Gardner Minshew and bringing all these people in that they don't believe in Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts did have the lowest completion percentage of any quarterback in the entire NFL last se- any starting quarterback in the entire NFL last season um, at 52%. So Jalen is a candidate to break out this year. I'm not buying it. I think everybody's a year early on it. I think it's going to come next year when he's off the Eagles. Um, but that's going to talk, that's going to wrap up the NFC East. Next up, we have the NFC South and in the NFC South, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty similar to last year. I think some teams are going to take steps and some teams are going to take steps backwards, obviously. But, uh, I think with the Bucks, I don't think we need to say much. They're going to win that division. They brought all 22 stars back. The biggest disadvantage the Bucks have is they are going to, because they're exactly the same as they were last season. They're going to need to figure out how to change things and keep 
evolving so that teams aren't catching up with them. And my biggest concern is with Bruce Arians because I don't think Bruce Arians is a good coach. And I think that Tom Brady is a huge reason they made it to the Super Bowl. Um, but that's all I want to say about them. With the New Orleans Saints, I think they're a team that's still good enough to be a 10-win team. I just think that they're going to heat up late. I think they still have the best coach in the division with Sean Payton. I think that it's going to take a few weeks for Jameis to settle in. They play a bunch of really good defensive teams early on in the season. But after about week four, I think that's when they're going to start to catch their stride. Um, because I think Jameis is going to be very injury prone. Not injury prone. Mistake prone in those first few games. They play um, a bunch of good defensive teams like I mentioned. And this, this division besides the Falcons, is shaping up to be a very strong defensive division. The Carolina Panthers are a team to watch that I have pegged for about 2022-2023 to be a top 10 defense, being with how young they are and how much talent, developing talent they have, and it's already being seen. I think J.C. Horn has was the cornerback prospect with the highest ceiling with his physical build, but I think for a team that's ready to win now that's not the Carolina Panthers, Patrick Sertain was the better pick, but... For the Panthers, I like J.C. Horn because this is a team where they're still so young that their defense is going to get – all of their defensive pieces are going to get good at the same time because they're all going to grow together. They're going to have a great amount of chemistry. Um, and I believe in Sam Darnold. I think Sam Darnold – people will say, oh, well, Sam Darnold – people who defend Sam Darnold say, oh, well, this is the first year he has weapons. I would take it a step further and say this is the first year he even has a left tackle. The kid has never had a left tackle in his entire three years of playing in the NFL. Um, the Panthers are a team that I think could swing to about eight wins, but I think that six and 11 for this season with how young their defense is and, um, they have a lot to learn and a lot of gel together on offense and their offensive line is average at best. I think this is a team that could easily leap over, um, the saints and the bucks in about two years. Once the bucks kind of move off of Brady and, um, their team is kind of, you know, the contracts are expiring and the Saints are trying to figure out their quarterback position or more importantly their cap situation, the Panthers have room to grow into that alpha team of this division. And with the Falcons, I just don't believe in their defense at all. I think their offense is still going to be extremely fun to watch and keep games close. But if coaching, if their new coach and Arthur Smith can take the defense to the next step, to that next level, I think the Falcons are going to be a very good team, and they could easily move up to six wins this season. Well, I shouldn't say very good team, but they could be a six-win team, and they could they could make some noise. I think it would be best for them is just to just stay a bad team and go get a draft pick and make it look like you're trying. But um, that's all I want to say about the South. Last but not least, we have the NFC West, which in my opinion is the best division of football. I think that the Rams, like with Sean McVay, who is arguably the best coach in the division – he, with a Matthew Stafford who's going to allow them to open up the passing games in a way that Jared Goff lowered the ceiling on, this Rams team is going to be very, is going to be much more explosive, which all of the top teams in the NFL, that's what they do best. That's what the Chiefs do best, is explosive plays. And the Rams, I think, are going to, they have the creativity. We've seen it last year and the year before that with Sean McVay. But I think now they have the creativity and you could add in the explosiveness to the offense vertically, which is going to make this team really good. And everybody who d doubts Matt Stafford, like, there's a few arguments I'll buy into, but I really think that he just suffered because of Detroit's uh, dysfunction. And I think that with a good coach, uh, I think you could argue that this is the best head coach he's ever had. Um, the sky's the limit for this team. I think they're one of my favorite teams to win the NFC uh, conference, but to go to the 49ers, 49ers, I have a 12 and five. Um, and if I didn't say I have the Rams at 13 and four, but the 49ers are a team that they were the most injured team in all of the NFL last season. Uh, their offense is still very good. Their defense is very good and have a ton of new pieces coming back. You add in Trey Sermon and you add in Elijah Mitchell to bolster their ground game for when Raheem Mostert gets a hangnail and is done for the season. Um, I think that they're built to win, and they're built to be dynamic. I think Jimmy Garoppolo gets a lot of crap, but he is a very good winning quarterback. Um, his biggest knock is he just needs to stay on the field. If he could stay on the field, I don't even think the 49ers would have drafted Trey Lance this year. I think they probably would have 
kept stayed where they were and kept the draft capital. But um, being with the question marks around Jimmy Garoppolo's longevity and stability, it made sense to go get Trey Lance, and Trey Lance is a phenomenal prospect. Um, I think when Trey Lance comes in, if he does come in this season, it'll be somewhere around Thanksgiving, maybe a little bit beforehand. Um, depending on how Garoppolo looks and how his health is and if he's struggling or not. And then I think the most volatile team in this division is the Seattle Seahawks. I think that with Pete Carroll, they'll always be very well defensively coached. My fear is that their defense isn't that good. Um, I think that with Jamal Adams, who just got paid and isn't really a true safety, he's more of a linebacker that plays a safety position. Um, Teams like the Rams and the 49ers that are designed to go over the top is going to be the biggest weakness for Seattle. Um, But I do trust Russell Wilson. I think Russell Wilson will always make this team a playoff team. And I think that Chris Carson is one of the most slept on running backs in the entire NFL. It really, the offense is really going to come down to their offensive line because if they can make it easier for Russell Wilson, we've actually like really never seen Russell Wilson have a clean pocket. Um, for a whole season. So I think the Seattle team could either swing to like nine and eight or they could jump to 12 and five. I think they're a team to watch and see how they play out because Russ is going to come out hot. He comes out hot every year or he gets hot on the back end. If Russell Wilson could play hot all year, I think they could easily win this division. It's not, well, I shouldn't say easily, but they could definitely, definitely win this division. And I have the Cardinals at nine and eight, and here's why. They are talented enough to win nine games without a coach. Cliff Kingsbury might be the biggest fraud in the entire NFL, and I think he might be one of the worst head coaches in the NFL. He's the cap to this team because he's easily the worst coach in in the division. He's never going to outcoach someone. I think a very good game to watch to measure this Cardinals team is going to be week one versus the Titans being that you have a great coach in Mike Vrabel with a bad defense and a good offense, and you have the Cardinals who have a great offense with Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore now, and uh, A.J. Green, the biggest weakness they have is their running game. And they're the if you're a Cardinals fan, you hope to see this defense develop. Um, I just think that if you guys have a, any other head coach in the entire – well, if you have most of the other coaches in the NFL, you guys are competitive – you guys are competitors to win this division, and it's not even, like, close. I think the Cardinals have one of the most dynamic offenses in this division and the entire NFL, especially the NFC. I just think that Cliff Kingsbury's inability to coach to win and to outcoach someone, I mean, he couldn't coach with the best quarterback in the entire NFL, and that's Patrick Mahomes in college. He couldn't win there either. This guy has never been a winner. I just think he's the ceiling. He's the cap to the Arizona Cardinals. But that's going to top off the NFC – division outlooks and predictions let's talk about the playoff picture i think that you have the tampa bay buccaneers as the one seed they're going to go out and win their division the rams are also going to win their division and the packers are going to win their division the giants are a team to flip i think if they don't win their division they're not going to make the wild card because i think they're going to be a team that's either boom or bust so to speak and i think their bust would be one game out of the wild card round, which would put them at basically nine and eight or eight and eight and nine. Um, but I think the 49ers are a team to watch. I think they're going to make a lot of noise. They could win the division. The Seahawks could also win the division. And I think Washington will definitely either win the division or make the wild card. It's really just dependent on how is, how many mistakes will Ryan Fitzpatrick make? Because looking at the division, looking at the Washington schedule, the most important game to them is week two. Because they come out of the gate against Los Angeles Chargers, who I think are going to be one of the best teams in the AFC. They're definitely going to be a wild card team, um, and they have a great defense. If if Washington comes out and loses that game, they go into the Giants at week two. The Giants have a great defense, and it's very similar situations at quarterback. I think that game comes down to who makes more mistakes at quarterback and who could run the ball better. Now, I'd put my money on Saquon Barkley over Antonio Gibson every day of the week. If they lose week two, they start the season 0-2, and and then they play uh, Atlanta and then New Orleans, which I have them pegged to win both games. Then they play a very tough stretch. I should have wrote wrote it down, but it would be 
Um, I know they play the Chiefs, the Packers, and I think the Broncos, and then play the Raiders, go into a bye, and then play the Buccaneers. So they could be looking at about three or two and seven, three and six or two and seven uh, by week nine, which is very scary. I think they're a team that's going to, the rest of their schedule, they could easily come out of it. But that week two game is going to be crucial because they have a very, the reason why I think they, they don't win the division is because of the concentration of tough games they have back to back to back to back to back. Because if Ryan Fitzpatrick is making mistakes, they really have to ask themselves to not lose the locker room. If you're Ron Rivera, do I keep Ryan Fitzpatrick in at quarterback? That's the biggest question. Player, teams I think that could come in and move the Seahawks out and Washington out, uh, I think you have to include the Minnesota Vikings, even though I doubt Kirk Cousins will win past the wild card round. And I also think you have to include the um, drawing a blank, <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings and the Arizona Cardinals. I think could be wrong there, but I think Seattle is a candidate to move up or move out, and I think Washington's a candidate to move up or move out. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, we post, like I said, podcast. Every Tuesday is fantasy podcast, and every Thursday is NFL coverage. We are trying our hardest to put out little clips like this throughout the course of the year. I have my first official power rankings on Instagram. I'm going to update, update those every Tuesday, whether that'll be in a short video like this or a short or just on Instagram on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but if you like what you heard, if you didn't like what you heard, comment, tell me what I did wrong, or tell me what you disagree with. Uh, if you liked it, like the video, subscribe, come back for more content like this. We are on Twitter and Instagram, and we are on Spotify. So that's going to do it for me. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you come back in the next one. Peace. Hardest to put out little clips like this throughout the course of the year. I have my first official power rankings on Instagram. I'm going to update, update those every Tuesday, whether that'll be in a short video like this or a short or just on Instagram on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but if you like what you heard, if you didn't like what you heard, comment, tell me what I did wrong or tell me what you disagree with. Uh, if you liked it, like the video, subscribe, come back for more content like this. We are on Twitter and Instagram and we are on Spotify. So that's going to do it for me. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you come back in the next one. Peace. <laughs>